Now after you have done the initial required configuration then you also need to maintain configuration settings okay so when you go to con maintain configuration settings here you basically maintain the parameters that basically okay so before we do that let's go and execute nwbc okay and see a couple of screens to understand how what difference this makes okay the parameter settings make so let's go to access management let's say user level right now if you see in this case right you by for example when you're trying to run the risk analysis report but default there are you know let's say five types of reports uh, that you can run right in your you know categories that you could include in your report okay the action level critical action permission level critical permission and all now these settings that you see here are controlled by the parameters okay so if you go to here so it controls it is controlled from here okay so we are looking at risk analysis screens so you will have different parameter groups okay how we are going to use some of these as we go along right now let us take a look at some parameters that are from risk analysis okay click on uh, new entries and then click on select risk analysis group and then in the parameter id you will have the parameters belonging to risk analysis group okay now there are 23 of those right now and if you look they all belong start from Thousand plus, okay. The, the parameter ID twenty ten twenty one till ten fifty five. Okay. Now, if you what is the report type, right? This is the report type that you are looking for. You're looking at right action level critical action level right let's set this and then we'll refresh the screen and see how this impacts okay so let's say you uh, select 1023 and parameter value as you see this action level permission level critical action critical permission they're all here Okay, so let's select, uh, let's say action level. Okay, and let's save it. Let's say this is configuration parameters. Let's go quickly and uh, refresh the screen. Okay, doesn't have. So let's go and re execute it again. So we default it to action level, right? Okay, so that is the default one. See, the permission level is gone. Okay, so you can only defa default it to the action one type, okay, report type. Okay, now similarly, you can go and pick the next parameter. Okay, so let's take uh, default type to default risk level. So where do you have this default risk level, right? Let's go back to the screen. 
you see the risk level is critical okay so if you want to make it high for example so let's say this risk level let's say high okay save it and let's go and check So when you do that, now your risk level is high. Similarly, if you have the rule set, right, the rule set is blank here, right. Now if you go and assign the rule set, which is the rule set, rule set 1025. And depending on how many rule sets have been defined you get the list here okay so let's say take global for now okay save it okay the global is here okay the user type is a dialog um, let's go and see if there is a setting for that so risk analysis parameter group and let's take this okay there is a user type but default it is coming to a dialog okay let's go and pick that so you have the dialog type here so if you want to say all okay in a risk analysis report, it doesn't make sense to have an all, but just in, let's see this, okay? So let's go and save it, and now check if you have a dialog is here, which was the default. Now if you go and check, it's gone, okay? So it, by, it takes everything, okay? Now, so like this right so depending on what parameters you want to activate or how you want what you want to see on the screen uh, in the risk analysis module you go and set up uh, these uh, parameters okay so let's take a look at locked user id to include locked users where is that right so if you click here so in your risk analysis report, do you want to include locked reports, uh, locked user IDs? Okay, so that will, when you run the report, you will see all of those, you know, even they include the locked reports, locked user IDs. Okay, all right, let's go include locked user IDs say no okay let's go and pick the next one so do you want to include the mitigated risks in your reports right or expired user IDs so I would say no okay let's set this up some of them and do you want to include mitigated risks in your uh, risk analysis report? I would say yes. Let's say yes. Let's see what else can we do very quickly for our reports. So there is a document from SAP that uh, the parameter document from SAP that gives you an, an entire details of what so the purpose of these parameters are for any any parameter group okay so for all the modules okay so if you see the default view right in this case in our case the default view is remediation view okay this is the view so what one which one do you want it by default so let's say i want it to be a technical view and what i do is come here and set the parameter 1050 to technical view. Save it. Okay. Now if I 
go and check it again so a technical view okay so the parameter settings in basically um, impact the way your access control screens behave okay by def uh, it's now in this case we are just looking at risk analysis uh, uh, parameters but you could do that for the remaining groups also okay so let's see So let's say this one, this again a yes and no, okay, so let's save it, all right, so this we configured the parameters to minimum parameters that you would need for uh, uh, risk analysis, okay, now we, we have this system here which is okay, this is for HANA system, you, if you want to change it, you can change it to your uh, logical group also if you want okay so you have the systems as well as the groups connector groups okay so that would if you pick the connector group it would include all the systems in that particular group okay now extended objects enabled okay now save it so similarly if you want to for example let's go back you have parameters set for uh, EM module okay there are some parameter workflow parameters they're not set here but we will uh, when we do it uh, you have some parameters set for ERM module here for SOD review who is going to review or SOD who is the reviewer right in this so that is there so here you will have the risk owner or the manager. So who are the reviewers? Let's take the manager, integrate it back. Then you also have your implementing UAR, user access review. Then you, you also have parameters for that. Then you also have parameters for, uh, for AM, ARM. You have parameters that for workflow for MSMP. You know, so you have all these parameters. So when somebody is submitting a risk, do you need to get an approval for that? Somebody is creating a function in risk for risk in risk analysis module. Do you want an approval for that? Do you, when somebody is creating a risk, okay, so the approval for that. So similarly for mitigation control, you have. So you can for pretty much everything you can have approvals sent you know you can get approvals using msmp okay for for that purpose uh, you will have to set the parameters for um, uh, for msmps for approvals okay these are the parameters for those okay when we do arm we'll come to some of these parameters okay let's do that continue Actually, we when we create even for a function, right? When we do that, let's activate to the MSMP and then let's see how that works. Okay, all right. But there is a process to go through. Okay, so there is a purpose for these parameters, and depending on your requirements, you need to set those parameters. Okay, so right now we set some parameters for risk analysis okay so okay, let's now take a look at how these parameters are useful for us save it okay come out now once these settings are done then the remaining settings are basically for uh, spec module specific ones except for the synchronization job so let's look at the synchronization job next okay 